right, what I want to do is I want to show you guys a method um, for completing the square to, uh, to solve for our, our, um, our function here and our x values. If you guys look at this, and we're trying to, you know, we're trying to factor this out or to solve for our, uh, solve for our values, what we see is we obviously this is not factorable, right? We can't find our zeros because what two numbers multiply time to give you negative one but add give you six? It's impossible, right? There's no two numbers that multiply give you negative one but add give you six, all right? So automatically, you know that you can either complete the square or use the quadratic formula. So let me go through again the steps to help you guys remember how to complete the square. Um, first thing we always want to do is make sure we have no nothing in front of our x squared, all right? If there was something in front of this x squared, which I will do a couple problems like that, you're going to have to factor it out. So the first important thing is to make sure that nothing, there's no coefficient in front of your x squared. In this problem, we're okay. The next thing you need to remember is our quadratic, is our quadratic form of a um, of our function. We have ax squared plus bx plus c. Then the next thing what we're going to do is um, we need to determine what our b over two. squared value is. And by finding that value and adding it to our equation, what that's going to do is that's going to give us a perfect square. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to separate separate these. I'm going to write x squared plus 6x and then b over 2, which is plus b over 2, which is 6 over 2 squared. All right. Now if you add something on one side of the equation, you have to also make sure you subtract it. So I'm actually going to subtract that same value. Well, 6 divided by 2 is what? 3. 3 squared is 9, correct? So let's just write it like this. Plus 9, and then you have to subtract 9 minus 1. Wouldn't that just cancel out? It does. You're exactly right. If I was going to write 5 equals 5, right? How does that even help? I'll show you in just a second. If I write plus 1, you have to subtract 1 to make it even, right? So right now you're thinking, yes, this is, you know, why are we doing this? We're just canceling them out. Well, the important thing, the reason why we did this, is because what this b over 2 squared gives us is it helps us give us a perfect square with this trinomial. So now, if I can actually put brackets around this, I can say, hey, this is a perfect square. This is x plus 3 times x plus 3, right? So you could say x plus 3 squared negative 9 minus 10, or negative 9 minus 1 is going to give you minus 10. You now, huh? You, don't you do not want to cancel them out. Well, you wrote, you wrote them in there, right? So, I mean, you put them in there, you want to use them for some reason. Well, there's a couple things. If I wanted to find the zeros, I would set this equal to 0 and I'd solve for x. Or if I just wanted the standard form of my function, I, do, I now have a standard form of my function. Yes? Are there two pluses on purpose? There are two pluses on purpose. Right there. Yeah, it was kind of like one of those uh, mathematical things. I don't know what I'm doing. It's kind of one of those things that you do in math. And you're like, yes. Yeah. Huh? What do you think of Completing the square. Yes, completing the square. Anything else? What if you did negative 9 and negative 1? Could be. Could be the number. 